Bitcoin crossing the $14,000 mark. Cryptocurrency surpassing $15,000 for the first time ever. Now it looks like we may hit the $17,000 mark. Bitcoin's price has been on a wild ride. 2017 alone saw massive gains, starting the year at under $1,000 and at its peak breaking $19,000. As Bitcoin's popularity surges and its price rises and falls, more and more people are asking the same question. How does Bitcoin, something that's essentially invisible and intangible, have value? That answer starts with basic economics. In econ, one easy way to think about value is like this. Something has value if it checks the following two boxes, scarcity and utility. Scarcity just means that the supply is finite. And in the case of Bitcoin, there's actually a set cap on the number of Bitcoins that can ever exist, 21 million. Ben Yu, a blockchain expert living in San Francisco, says this set cap makes it more desirable than other assets, even gold. We can have things like the California Gold Rush, where people find an enormous supply of gold just by accident somewhere, and that can dramatically increase the supply over time. And so it begins, the great gold rush to California. Or technological increases make it far easier for us to mine gold. So we actually see that today. We mine gold at four times the rate that we did just 100 years ago. So if Bitcoin checks the box for scarcity, what about its utility? Bitcoin's utility lies in its potential to be a more efficient currency or commodity than we already have. Proponents say it's useful for a number of reasons. First, Bitcoin's decentralized, meaning no bank, government, or single person has control over it. It can't be toppled by corruption at the top. Another use of Bitcoin is that it's trivially divisible, meaning you can buy a donut with it as easily as you can buy a house or even a mansion. Gold is very difficult to use transactionally. You can't go to the store and you know, shave off some gold shavings to pay for your cup of coffee or buy a car with it. And third, the code it's built on is open source, meaning it's available for anyone to look at, scrutinize, and even modify. But as you may have noticed, none of those uses are intrinsic. And that's a point Bitcoin skeptics love to make. It has no intrinsic value. The idea that it has some huge intrinsic value is just a joke. It is not a rational currency in that sense. But here's the thing. Other assets and currencies that we trust, like gold and paper money, don't have that much intrinsic value either. Take dollar bills. According to the Federal Reserve, it costs about 12 cents to create a $20 bill. So the rest of that 20 bucks, the remaining $19.88, comes from the trust people place in it. And that's actually exactly the same with Bitcoin. Fiat currencies and Bitcoin and almost any other form of money is just based on the trust that people place in it. Tom Lee says that Bitcoin is no different from Facebook or Google. If you ask a baby boomer, can you justify the value of anything that's a digital business, they probably don't accept that Facebook, Google, Netflix, Amazon, Apple, I mean, these are the largest companies in the S&P 500, and they're primarily digital businesses built almost purely on digital trust. So if we agree Bitcoin has some value, at least for some people, then how much could a single Bitcoin actually be worth? We see people on TV making predictions all the time. I wouldn't be surprised to see a six-figure headline. The end game on Bitcoin is that it will hit three to four hundred thousand dollars. But how are they actually getting these numbers? A lot of them do it by comparing Bitcoin to gold, because they perceive those two assets as being most similar to each other. The total value for all the gold ever mined in the world is about $7.5 trillion. So if Bitcoin were to replace gold completely, then each Bitcoin would be worth $357,000. It's simple math. The total value of gold divided by the total number of Bitcoins equals the potential value of each Bitcoin. Or if you want to be more realistic, just take a portion of it. If Bitcoin just captures 5% of the total market for alternative currencies today, which is predominantly gold, Bitcoin's worth $25,000 per coin. And here's another theory analysts use to price Bitcoin, Metcalfe's Law. 
Metcalf, an electrical engineer, proved that the value of a social network or telecom company is proportional to its number of users squared. A good way to think about it is like this. A single telephone is useless. But the value of telephones increases exponentially as others get phones. Metcalf's law holds for Facebook using 10 years of data. And Tom Lee says it holds for Bitcoin. Since 2013, 94% of the value of Bitcoin has been explained by just those two variables. Ultimately, Bitcoin's price will depend on the demand for it. If people believe in it and continue to buy it more than they sell it, then the price will rise. And conversely, if Bitcoin is sold more than it's bought, the price will fall. Many people think that Bitcoin is a bubble, and that's predicated on the concept that Bitcoin has no value. But there's reason to believe that that isn't true. By definition, Bitcoin is scarce. And the crypto may have utility as a superior way to store and exchange wealth.